Hey, this is Pete Hink. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the best fishing of the year. It's the mullet run. Here's some tips on how you can catch more fish during the mullet run. Whether you're on a kayak or paddleboard, even some of these tips might help you if you're on a boat or walking the beach. So stay tuned. Well, it's that time of year mullet run is going on now everyone hears about it you see it on TV you see it on YouTube tarpon just busting on these schools of mullet but here's some tips that are gonna help you if you go down to the beach chances are you can hit that beach you probably won't see anything going on it's one of those things being at the right place at the right time so what I like to tell you to do get down to the beach launch your kayak if there's bait going off Great, that's fantastic. Sometimes you can sit there and catch them right from the beach. Um, net some mullet, put them in your live well, paddle off the beach, and you're set to go. Now, best thing to do if there's no mullet around is head north. You want to paddle north. The reason being, this is the fall migration, all the baits going south. So if you're going north and these bait schools are going south, at one point you guys are going to collide. And once you collide, then you can sit there and follow that school back to your takeout. So it's a great way and it's the best way to find fish out there. Now if you're going and you're trolling, and I suggest if you go out there you don't catch any bait, go ahead troll a plug behind you. Just because there's no bait there doesn't mean the predator fish aren't there. A lot of times you're just like the tarpon and the snook. They're waiting for these baits to come down. So sometimes they've been waiting all morning, nothing going on, and all of a sudden here comes a little bait and I like this one of my favorite plugs to throw it's a wind cheater and uh, the wind cheater plug is uh, it's, it's great it casts really good into the wind also it's a great trolling bait for snook and tarpon so I'll pull this behind my paddleboard as I'm paddling north okay another option too soft plastic paddle tails like this this is a large one you can even use smaller ones Pull this behind you and if you slow up if this thing sit there in the sand is bouncing in the sand uh, it's very attractive to these uh, predator fish. So there's a couple of them that you can pick. <clears throat> but keep paddling north. Once you do find that school of bait, you can go ahead and net. Cast a net from your kayak or paddleboard and net whatever you need. You don't mean you need that many baits. You know, most of the bait wells will only carry maybe six, six mullet. So you don't need a big cast net. And it's very hard to throw a big cast net. So get like anywhere from a three foot to a five foot cast net. That's all you need, and it's fairly easy to cast, even from a kayak or paddleboard. Throw it out there, get your bait, throw it in the bait well, you're ready to go. Now most people, when they do fish, they're going to be fishing, they'll sit there and they'll take their live mullet, I hook it through the lips, on a circle hook, you throw it out there on a free line. Great. It's a great option. I do it, I throw it out there. What I find is that 90% of the time I'm catching jacks. You know, the jack school just going nuts on these things. And you got to remember, if you look at it, there's a million baits out there. And, of course, if you throw your live bait out there, he's going to swim in with them. So he's one in a million. Now, if you want to get that tarpon, you want to get that big snook. Things I suggest, I've been using a jig head as I'm trolling. And I'll sit there, and it's a Gulfstream lure and uh, just a plain jig head, troll right jig head, sharpen the hook really sharp and I put that out there and I'm hooking tarpon that way. What that does is it gets that bait down below the school. So as those jacks are tearing the bait schools up, injured fish are floating to the bottom. When they float to the bottom, the tarpon, are, you know, they're, they're taking the easy way out. They're scooping up any injured fish. So a live mullet with that jig head on the bottom, that thing's kicking around trying to get away. It draws attention to the predator fish really quick. Um, try it, I guarantee your hookup ratio is gonna be a lot better bad thing with the jig is that I'm hooking a lot of sharks also I'm losing a lot of rigs to the sharks so what I've been doing besides a jig head is using a knocker rig it's just a you know typical knocker rig it could be a one ounce to two ounce weight whatever weight you need the size of your um, circle hook and always use the circle hook because the circle hook is going to get that fish right in the corner of the mouth most of the time so if you hook that shark, it's going to be in the corner of the mouth. You're going to be able to land it. Or tarpon, you get it right in that sweet spot. So your, your, um, 
chances of keeping that fish hook are greatly increased by having this. Now you want to make sure you get the heavy duty hooks. Don't get light wire circle hooks. Get the heavy duty hooks. These are big fish. Most of the fish are 100 pounds plus. A lot of them are 100 pounds plus and they're going to bend out a uh, light wire circle hook. So you want to get the heavy 3x or whatever it is. Uh, heavy duty circle hooks. Your hook size can vary. Finger mullet I might use a 4 aught, 5 aught. The big silver mullets I'm using up to a 9 aught hook. You know, carry a you know, a variety of hooks and match your hooks to the size of the bait. A great option. But have it on this rig <clears throat> and I got beads on there so this stays in the leader area and the beads kind of just help protect the knot so I don't want the knot to get kind of damaged from, from, from the weight. Great outfit. Now the outfits you want to use, I'm using this is my uh, jigging rod. You know, it's a 7,000, 30 pound test. It'll handle just about any uh, you know, shark or tarpon I catch off the beach, I have a good chance of landing it like this. Now, you don't want to bring a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> this is my little pitch rod. And I use this if the lady fish are in real thick and everything um, during the mullet run, which sometimes they are. I got a little swim bait. I put it on there. Now, this is a little 2500 series, 10 pound test, and uh, a little paddle tail. If I catch a lady fish, and if you guys do, and it's a good chance you're out in the mullet run, you know, you're going to get jacks. And every once in a while you can catch a ladyfish. Keep the ladyfish, throw it out there on that big rod. Reason being, think of it, man. You know, the mullet run, you know, let's say you've been, for the last month, let's say last week, you've been eating nothing but chicken. Okay? Chicken. Breakfast, noon, night, everything is chicken. Okay, after a while you get tired of it. You know, it's still good, but then all of a sudden there's a filet mignon sitting there. Okay, you're going to jump on that filet mignon. I mean, it's, it's, it's a change. And sometimes these fish, you know, they like a little change of pace. Ladyfish, fantastic bait. You take a ladyfish, and you put it on that rig, and you get that thing near the bottom. Guarantee, I guarantee you're going to hook a big tarp in it. Something big's going to eat it. You know, it's my go-to bait. So this little outfit is great. I did make a cast the other day with it. And just because it's a small bait doesn't mean you're going to catch small fish. I hooked a tarp in. It was 80... I say a good 80-pound class on this little outfit, and darn near smoked the reel. I mean, almost out of it. I had to put a lot of pressure on this uh, fish, trying to land it, and I had it on for like 20 minutes. I was really surprised before the, I think the line finally just gave out. I think the tail must have hit the uh, line, you know, passed past the leader and broke off. But uh, you know, just because uh, it's the mullet run and there's huge fish out there. Don't be afraid to throw a small bait, especially if you see a lot of small baits out there. It may not be mullet. It could be, you know, herring. It could be any kind of little, everything from glass minnows on up. So if you see small baits uh, in the water, throw something small. Try to match the hatch to whatever's out there. So really pay attention to the size of the bait and try to match it. And don't think something small like this or even like, say, uh, a DOA terrorizer or something like that won't catch a big fish it will catch a huge fish so try to match that up so those are some of the the, uh, the tips and stuff that I use like I say make sure you got the right size tackle spinning rods from 5,000 on up to 7,000 or 8,000 uh, traditional tackle don't be afraid you know to have heavy-duty tackle leader 60 to 80 pound test is what I'm using I can get by during the mullet run it's they're, they're feeding like crazy. I can get by with 60 to 80 pound test. Fluorocarbon leader and a circle hook. It's Normally I would never use that, that, that size leader, but during a mullet run, you know, it's game on. So, guys, hopefully you enjoy these tips. Now get out there, catch some fish, man. We still got another good two to three weeks of good solid mullet run from Jacksonville to, and they're getting down almost to Miami right now. So it's gonna be game on for the next few weeks. So it's Pete Hink. If you enjoy this, please subscribe to my channel and share it. I mean, I need all the help I can get, and I'll try to get a new video out here every week. And, uh, I, you know, always thank you for watching. Get out there, kiss some fish.